my lovelies and welcome to Along the Lines, my crafty show about yarn, fluffy things and this week a little bit of extra Christmas cheer. Um, December has been a completely crazy month. It started on such a high with the brilliant workshop with Stephen West at the Sheep Shop here in Cambridge. So we had a great workshop on uh, top-down shawl construction. And then I had the opportunity uh, to ask Stephen a few questions in a little interview. If you haven't seen the interview yet, just stop what you're doing, stop watching this and go watch the last episode. I'll link it in the little eye in the corner there and uh, just have a look because he was such a brilliant and fun guest to have. Um, I hope that this will be the first of many interviews. Um, so that was the beginning of December and since then I've skipped a week, put my beer down, um, I've skipped a week because uh, just busy, wrapping presents, doing lots of lovely uh, stuff in preparation for uh, some family time. So I've got lots of great stash to show you, or oh, some lovely stuff that arrived. I have some works in progress, some really nice stuff that I've been working on, no finished objects at this point. I'm also planning my first craft along for January, so I'll be telling you more about that later and organising a little giveaway to go along with it. I have a whole box of yarn to show you. It basically fills up this entire box. So let's get started. Starting with the reason the box arrived. So I ordered from Knit Picks in the US since they now ship to the UK and uh, might have gone very slightly overboard. Two lovely balls of worsted, which is very loosely spun uh, single, which is going to make a great color work, not color work, a great brioche hat uh, with a single color as the complementary one. So one's slightly rainbow, one's kind of uh, b limey blue to pinky purpley colours. So limey blue, hmm, that's a new one. Limey green, blue, purple, pink. There you go. I know my colours. Next were these three skeins of Hawthorne Sport, also some from Knit Picks, um, which I hope I'll make into pairs of socks because sport weight makes it just that little bit thicker. I think it should be nice. And it's 80% uh, superwash wool and 20% nylon, so I think it should withstand being turned into socks quite nicely. I also went a little crazy with the uh, Felici, which is the Knit Picks range of self-striping. They are just absolutely gorgeous. So there is a blue purpley one. I've got two of each one. Um, actually, I've got two of each one. I should say I've got four of the rainbow socks color because I just, I just love these. I'm thinking I might actually use two balls per sock and make literally knee-high rainbow socks. I mean, how much happier can it, can it get? And the other colours that I got um, is the Baker Street kind of grey creamy colours uh, into blue. And I'll show you because I've already cast those on, so I'll show you when I show you the works in progress. And because it was such good value ordering straight from the US rather than ordering through a UK reseller of Knit Picks, I got four balls of uh, dishcloth cotton, dishy. Um, I've, I've made tons of uh, dishcloths out of dishy, and admittedly I certainly haven't gone through all my cotton stash, but I really like these and my mother-in-law likes them, my sister-in-law likes them, so I'm happy to keep making them and keep giving them away. Um, it's a nice very very easy project to take you know to the pub when I go to knit night or to just kind of carry around and not really have to think what kind of project I want to work on when I'm on the road it's just nice and easy. In the box of knit picks there was also some yarn for my friend Carrie so she's acquired various uh, bits of lovely chroma in fingering weight also some Felici for her and uh, I'm really glad that Knit Picks are now shipping to the UK because uh, it's just, it's nice, great, simple, uh, commercially spun, commercially dyed yarn. So the big upside is that while yes, there are batches for colors, it's a lot more consistent. So if you're starting something and you don't really know if you'll need more, sometimes hand dyed can be a bit tricky because hand dyers can't necessarily replicate the same colors. With Knit Picks, Generally, you'll pretty much get the same thing. You may have a little bit of variation where you need to alternate the two balls for a little bit, but generally it's 
nice, it's fairly cheap and it just makes great sturdy projects. Now moving on to the non nitpick stuff, nice, bright. Um, at the end of the workshop at the sheep shop, I couldn't resist. There was also a Sparkle Duck trunk show. So I picked up two skeins of the Sparkle Duck Solo, which is uh, a, I call it a noodly single. So it's a fingering weight single, but it kind of it does kink on itself a little bit and it's kind of got a lot of um, uh, spun energy to it. So it still wants to, to kink a bit. Of course, once you've knit it and you've washed it, it's absolutely fine. So the two colors I got were, no, I'm sorry, I can't actually read it. Uh, so the purple one's called Who Needs Chocolate? But I have to say the green one, I can't read what it says. So it's kind of a chartreuse green, kind of slightly vivid, almost radioactive green. Um, and I can't wait. I think I'll probably knit those two together with a slightly more neutral color from my stash. Haven't decided what it'll become, but I think in the honor of having bought it on the day of the Stephen West workshop, I think it needs to be a Stephen West shawl. Only fair. Now for the last bit, if you're part of the Hedgehog Fibers Club and you don't want to see the spoilers for this month, turn around for 30 seconds. So these two colors were part of the Sock Yarn Club. So the this one is called, I want to say what colors they are in case you're turning around. Uh, so we've got the Eclipse and we've got Polly. And both are really lovely, but actually I think this one, I've already found a new owner for it. I don't really know what to do with reds. They're not a color that I feel I want to knit or I want to wear. So I think I'll uh, sell this one on to a friend but this one I think I'll really enjoy. Um, also, I received the Twist uh, Sock Club as well, and this one was these colours. It's very nice. Should be good fun, um, good fun to put with a slightly more neutral colour. Um, okay, if you're part of the club, you can turn around. You're safe now. So I think that's a fair amount of stash acquisition. I actually can't fit everything in my shelves anymore, so I think we, we've re reached critical mass where 2016 will have to involve a lot more faster knitting or a lot less stash acquisition. Before I move on to works in progress, I think there's also some non-yarn stash acquisitions. I have bought the uh, Nancy Marchant uh, knitting brioche book. It's the one... Uh, that Stephen recommended and I thought I really fancied having a real book to look at when I was working on these different uh, brioche patterns. I'm starting with a very simple two color straightforward no increases no decreases nothing complicated but I liked the thought of having this as a reference for later and it's probably a book that I won't not that I won't respect but that I'll feel free to either annotate or stick post-it notes in so that it really becomes my my bible for brioche. Um, can't wait to really get into it. I've started, I'll show you what I've done so far and uh, yes I've definitely nailed it now. Uh, the other one I got is from Amazon where I've been getting occasionally books that are uh, on the kind of new and used section, so not shipped by Amazon, shipped by third parties. And this one was used and was something like one pence plus shipping, and the shipping is £2.80, fair enough. But, um, so that meant that the book cost me £2.81 instead of, uh, so there you go, it should have been £16, so £2.80 is a pretty good deal. It's uh, Knit, Knit and Knit. Profiles and Projects from Knitting's New Wave. And it's got some slightly wacky and wild uh, projects. There's one particular top that I found interesting that I saw in Ravelry. And uh, that's what made me choose to order order the book. And it's this kind of weird garter stitch wraparound where long strips are tied together to kind of make a quite nice shapely top with a v-neck. Um, completely wild, a bit mad, and I think I'd been kind of uh, drinking, definitely drinking the Stephen West juice when I decided to order it. But I think it should be something interesting to try. I don't know whether it'll look any good on me, but why not? And finally, last stash acquisition, I seem to have ordered a whole bunch of Haya Haya needles um, in various lengths and various sizes. But I think because I'm doing so much more 
small in the round knitting, I've decided while yes I can work magic loop using um, a longer cable, I'm actually enjoying just working in the round with smaller needles on a smaller uh, cable. So this one for example, so that's a four millimeter, 16 inch, 40 centimeter cable. So this is the length of the whole thing. Um, it means that if I'm working on a hat or on something small, the needles are shorter, the cable is obviously very short, um, but it just means that I don't have to worry about uh, working with double pointed needles or something like that. I don't like, or it's not that I don't like DPNs, but I just, I don't like carrying DPNs around because I lose one, I sit on them, I drop them in the car, I drop them in public transportation, which is a lot more embarrassing. So I just thought this was a worthwhile investment at this point. So that's one, two, three, four, five sets of higher highs. Thank you, Santa. Mm. This was a good pick. We went to uh, Beers of Europe earlier today, which is this warehouse uh, beer shop. And my sister picked that one. It's called the Fat Yak. And I think she was drinking that when she was in Australia. We had a great day out. We went to uh, some of the Norfolk beaches. Let me tell you, beaches on 23rd of December is they can be a little bit uh, breezy, but uh, it's it's been really nice and warm. Today was super sunny, so perfect day to be out. Uh, we then, uh, we visited a castle, and again, that was just lovely. Um, some quite interesting castle grounds uh, from the 1100s, so that was Castle Rising. And of course it was right next to a lovely little village tea shop, uh, right next to the castle. So we stopped there for lunch and came back via the beer shop and now we're starting our sampling of the beers. That's why we're each uh, having a little sample of each one. And uh, next one we're moving on to my pick. have my works in progress and they essentially consist of brioche brioche and a little bit more brioche so first this is hardly worth showing but I was quite pleased with it um, I really just need to bind it off because it was nothing more than just a swatch um, it's my first brioche swatch that almost didn't go wrong I've got one row that appears to have gone wrong here but I can live with that so on one side it's primarily tealy green, you can see the grey in between, while on the other side it's much more grey, you can see the teal in between. So it's an interesting stitch and it's not that hard once you get your head around it, but I just never found the time to sit down and really learn it. So now that I felt I was comfortable with the swatch, I decided to uh, untangle everything first. Um, <laughs> I decided to make a cowl using uh, just, what's the grey? Uh, using grey Cory Dale in DK weight that I hand dyed last year, I think. In fact, that's one of the ones that I hand dyed when I did my little workshop with Gemma, uh, so essentially a year ago. 
On the other side is a blue, purple, pink uh, hand spun that I spun a few years ago with a little bit of sparkle. So the uh, main side is going to be the grey one, but uh, I have to say the purple looks quite quite striking as well. So it's really it's it's a great stitch because it makes it quite reversible. Um, I'm looking forward to wearing it, and I just thought I'd start with something simple, something that doesn't involve. Uh, shaping, so no increases, no decreases, just keep it nice and standard and easy. Um, and it's a hand spun I'm quite pleased with. Uh, I think I probably made the bat as well, so I took fibre in blues and purples and pinks and some sparkle and then put that through the drum carder, which just meant that I could get the colours that I really wanted. And it's just a single and it's just roughly DK weight or so, but I'm not a brilliant spinner, so it's all a little bit kind of thick and thin, gently thick and thin. So those are my two brioche projects and I'll also show you the socks that I've cast on out of the Felici uh, from Knit Picks. So here they are. I certainly don't work on socks quite as quickly as uh, the knitting expat Mina. She is an absolute sock knitting machine. She's so quick. Um, I love seeing her stuff on Instagram. Uh, the progress well, and of course in her podcast as well but it's just always so impressive to see somebody get a pair of socks done or multiple pairs of socks done in a week I can't even dream of that um, so these are the colors for the uh, Baker Street colorway which I'm quite happy to uh, make for my husband Andrew because we're both quite well we were big we are big fans of Sherlock the UK version but we're both enjoying watching Elementary, the uh, US series that follows the Sherlock Holmes story in modern day. So Baker Street, good fun colorway. Don't know yet quite how the Felici is going to wear. I've heard some people complain about it, but I've heard other people say they absolutely swear by it. So I guess we'll have to just test for ourselves. How could I forget? I nearly forgot to show you my exploration station, which I started on the day of the workshop. It's currently attached to two of the four colors, so it's a little bit tricky to move around, but uh, here you go. Here's my exploration station to date. So it begins with crescents of each of the, each of the colors. So the gray is serving as the divider for all the colors. And then I've got three shades of Skin Queen yarns, which I really, really like. I have to say, the, the one thing I would do differently, if I were to do this again, um, I think I would choose colours that have different levels of saturation. So this, this one, the variegated one, is slightly lighter, but otherwise the grey, the gold and the bronze have very similar... Uh, they're kind of medium colours. They're neither very dark colours, they're never, neither very pale colours. And I think as a result, it feels a little bit kind of mushed up together. Um, it, that may change once I add the other sections where the colours are uh, mixed together. So I think the next section is the brioche one, which involves two colours being used together. The next one is some kind of modified seed stitch. And then I think there's just a kind of... Uh, uh, garter section with with two colors and then the bottom the very bottom row is in is just a gray uh, kind of lace edging so I think if I were to do it again I would probably choose uh, a couple of pale colors a bright punchy medium saturation color and then a dark color as well and I think that would probably allow the sections to each shine a little bit more but that's an excuse to make another, a perfect excuse to make another uh, exploration station at a future date using different colors. So it doesn't matter. I'm sure this will be very wearable and very pleasant. Um, and it was good fun to start it on the day of the workshop as well. Finally, I can also announce the craft along that I'd like to organize for next year. In January, I'd like to start the battle against boring. The aim is for you to try a new craft or try something, whether it's big or small, 
challenge yourself, try something new, get out of your comfort zone, whether it's trying new colours that you've never used or trying new stitches that you've never tried, you could decide to try brioche stitch and make something amazing out of it. It's not about making the prettiest, it's not about making the biggest, it's about trying something new and challenging yourself to do something you've never done before. I'm considering taking a pottery class which is something I've always wanted to do, but I've never really made the time to try. So the idea is that you'll give yourself the opportunity to try something new. Uh, it can be baking, it can be sewing, it can be knitting, crochet, spinning, anything like that. But the objective is just to push yourself out of your comfort zone, push yourself out of the habits that we all kind of set settle into because it's comfortable. I'll give more details about it in January once I've spoken to a few more possible sponsors and a few more lovely people who might give prizes, but it's your chance to start thinking about it, start figuring out what you might like to try, what new thing you might uh, want to challenge yourself with. Um, January is a good time, everyone kind of starts with a fresh slate, so have a think about it. Your first challenge in the battle against boring is to leave a comment below and to tell me what you would like to make, what your challenge might be. I'll pick a winner out of these comments and send a lovely prize that was sent by a viewer. So Erin, who trades as Holland Handmade on Etsy, has sent me two lovely project bags. So this is the one that I'm keeping. So I've got this one with the lovely blue inside and she's sent this lovely bright funky one with a very interesting inside as well. Um, she's sent this one for me to give away. So if you leave a comment and tell us what you would like to make, what kind of activity you're going to challenge yourself with, I'll pick a winner and I'll send this lovely bag and I might put some goodies in it, I don't know yet might find something nice from my stash that I can send you and uh, I'll pick a winner probably in January so you've got a little bit of time to think about what you'd like to make and share with us. Uh, of course if you share on the YouTube video comments um, you'll have a chance to win but if you're not leaving a comment on YouTube you can also just join the Ravelry Along the Lanes group and tell us about it there. Um, we can then keep each other uh, encouraged, we can report and I can guarantee you I'm planning on setting myself some challenges where I won't necessarily succeed, it won't necessarily be the nicest or the prettiest, but I really want to do this as a challenge to do something different, something new, try either colours or styles or things that I haven't done before, whether they go well or not. For example, baking is definitely not my strength and it's something that I hope I can get better at. Let me know what you have in mind. So this brings me to the end of the episode. I hope you have a wonderful time over Christmas, uh, whether you're celebrating Christmas, whether you're just taking a nice relaxed break, or maybe you're part of the workforce that continues to absolutely soldier on throughout Christmas. Um, I hope you have a lovely time and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye.